Welcome to Analysis and Chains with Nathan and Neil. Hey there, everybody. This is Nathan. With me is Neil, as always. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple. Ripple is a very interesting cryptocurrency uh, that's uh, based on uh, uh, on a use case for banks. Neil's going to tell us a bit about that. But first, how are you doing, Neil? I'm doing fantastic, Nathan. Uh, life is good over here in Canada, making the most of the sun before it disappears for uh, six months. <laughs> yes. Uh, did uh, did summer fall on a weekend this year? Uh, I think we got a full week um, this summer. Yeah, it's probably the worst summer ever since I moved here. But uh, yeah, um, we won barbecue all summer. So uh, no different to when I lived in Ireland. So uh, yeah, now it's just uh, time to get ready for uh, winter. Great. Well, uh, we've got some news for all of our listeners. Some interesting stuff happened in the past week. First of all, I have programmed us an official Twitter bot. So if, yeah, if you go to at analysis in chain, uh, I couldn't fit the final S on there, but at analysis in chain, the Twitter handle, uh, there's a bot there and you can DM that bot, you direct message that bot, any crypto symbol. So uh, BCC, ETH, uh, uh, all the weird so ones, B, all the C, mainstream ones, C, e, all of them. M. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and it'll it'll get back to you with pricing information. So I was quite proud of that. Next week, uh, next Friday, uh, I'm uh, we're going to be starting a interview series. In the fall, we want to do start doing more interviews with uh, people who are running crypto projects. And uh, our first interview is going to be with uh, Radoslav Albrecht of Bitbond, which is the oldest small business loan company in Berlin that uses Bitcoin for small business loans. So be very exciting there. And finally, we're going to have a web page, a new web page change coming up. Uh, the biggest deal is that we're going to be able to give you a bit more news rather than just our uh, uh, a list of our podcasts. And we'll also be able to collect your email addresses if you want to stay part of our newsletter or stay informed about uh, any developments. So Cool. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, uh, Nathan, if people want to name our bot, they're, oh, yeah. they're welcome to. Yeah. They, if people have a good idea for our bot, then, uh, you know, write in to info at analysisinchains.com and tell us you, what you think it should be called. Because I'm vetoing uh, Body McBotface right off the bat. Uh, body, body McBotface, I'm sorry, is, yeah, is already off the table. But yeah, if you have any interesting ideas to uh, give our bot some personality, please write in. Yeah, write in info and analysis and and uh, if we choose yours, we'll uh, we'll give you one hundred of our own special analysis and chains crypto tokens, the nutshells. Bargain, bargain. All right, so let's talk about some Ripple, Neo. Yeah, so um, Ripple. I think on a high level, just to I think I just called you Neo. I know. Of... I was like, okay, it's, it's the last week's show is still sticking in my head. Yeah, yeah. I think you're obsessed with Neo, but. Uh... Anyway, <laughs> um, in terms of uh, Ripple, which is going to make a Ripple on... Sorry, that was a terrible joke. Um, Ripple, which is uh, another cryptocurrency out there, the, the big idea behind it is that it's to help with um, exchanges between banks. It's a, it's a competitor to SWIFT. So the idea is to enable banks to put their transactions on the ledger whenever they're moving money around. And I guess the bigger picture is that when all fiat potentially converts to uh, to cryptocurrency in some format, they will be uh, the leading exchange for a lot of these uh, institutions. Hmm. No, it's a, it, it is very interesting in that uh, they already have a very big following. And in preparing for this show, we went on uh, Reddit and started asking around what people had to say, why they were interested in it, what sort of community was there. The um... <laughs> so, so what did you find out, Nathan? <laughs> what did, oh, what did geez, they do? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. Um, no, it's interesting because I did this for Neo as well uh, last week, and uh, I found that it, it is a very different feeling. To the community, um, Ripple is 
Uh, Ripple really is more of a long-term hold, right? It's, uh, this, is a, this is something that has a very solid use case. They're getting big banks in behind it. Mm-hmm. And the, it, it, people aren't really speculating on the day trading. They are speculating. They're expecting it to be worth something. But uh, they are a much more skeptical community of people asking questions. Mm-hmm. because it doesn't go through these hype cycles in the same way. Mm-hmm. And uh, every uh, I was told like regularly they'll have people come up and tell them that, uh, oh, this, uh, this is a big scam or something. And so they tend to be skeptical of, uh, 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 of people making random comments, whereas a very different feel from the, from the community I talked to uh, at NEO where everyone – felt like uh, they were excited about the technology, but they were also sort of nationalistic about it because it was yeah. a, a very Chinese-oriented uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Well, the, well the, the thing about Ripple is that it's one of the most, it's, it's one of the most uh, closest towards real-life use um, because it has a targeted, I guess, industry. And... The whole point of that industry is to is like a format of exchange. So I think that that these tokens will be used in those exchanges, and it's not to be used like transacting for goods, like what Zcash or Dash or Bitcoin is seen as used to be used for. And therefore, I think that's why they're more speculative. That's why their prices tend to shoot up. Whereas, uh, whereas Ripple is more functional in its use. And therefore, I think that's why its prices are so low because it doesn't make sense to have these crazy uh, fluctuations in price for Ripple when these institutions that are existing today need to use it to um, to move money around. So if it ends up being like $1,000 just to move money around, they're going to be thinking, okay, this is pointless. Whereas if you look at the actual price of Ripple today, I think it's like 20 cent today, 25 cents. So that makes a lot more sense as a rate for these financial institutions. So I think because it's closer to real world, uh, because it's easier to sort of gauge what the price should be, it's, yeah, it's going to be less speculative. But to think that it's more of a scam compared to Bitcoin and these other ones, I, I, I don't really buy that because I think this is much more closer to being implemented in the real world compared to most other uh, cryptocurrencies out there. What I'll tell you I found uh, is that they are a few years away from uh, going live with, uh, with this exchange system with the banks. Uh, I wasn't given an exact timeline, but some people were estimating 2020, 2021, something to that effect, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of development work that still has to get done. These are big institutions with a lot at stake. And um, what was interesting is I ended up talking to uh, the chief crypto- uh, cryptographer. You know, he started answering my questions. His uh, name is David, David Schwartz. And um, so uh, there's a, a, a lot really – I was geeking out about the algorithm <laughs> that they were using because uh, there's, a, there's a lot behind it. I did want to say uh, one quick uh, note, uh, Neil. As far as I understand from reading over their white paper and their technical documentation, even if XRP goes through the roof, yeah. it probably won't increase transaction prices. Okay, so that's it's very more, interesting. The transaction prices, as far as I can tell, are very small. Mm-hmm. They're not done to incentivize the people who are running the nodes like Bitcoin, they're done to basically discourage spam on the system. And uh, so that, you know, someone doesn't come up and and make a million record, uh, a million transactions back and forth in order to clog the system up. So, but then uh, I guess I then the big question is what, what will drive price? Like, is it that um, I guess it's down to adoption then? Is it? Yeah, I think it's more adoption. But uh, I, the way they've designed the system is that it has a use case that they are moving towards, uh, which is this SWIFT style system of uh, inter interbank settlement uh, across borders. But you can use XRP for other uh, other applications. There's nothing stopping you from hosting your own node, building on top of it, and using XRP, the the, the native token 
of Ripple for whatever project that you had going on. So uh, they don't, as far as I could tell, they don't have like a, a Turing complete uh, programming language like Ethereum, mm -hmm. but you could, uh, but that doesn't preclude you from doing something with it. Okay, very interesting. So I think, I think that's the space that I think a lot of people would be watching to help them understand the potential Ripple. And potentially that's probably why we saw the price spike up recently because there was huge anticipation of some form of movement into China. But it turned out that ended up being a conference called Swell that's coming up in October and has Ben Bernanke speaking at it. And I think that then goes back to your point on the potential of, of building with Ripple that you know we could see a lot of people really get behind the technology, especially when you have someone like Ben Bernanke going to the conference like this. It really does speak to a lot of confidence you know, regarding the cryptocurrency. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think you made a very good point there. It's interesting, Neil. Um, oh, in in reading the uh, the forum this week, uh, the the hype that came in when the countdown was starting and no yeah. one was sure what it was going to be. The rumors were flying, and um, I mean, obviously, there's there is still a lot of speculation mm -hmm. around this cryptocurrency because they haven't released yet. Mm -hmm. And so everything is around, okay, what's coming next? What do they have? And uh, just because it's got this use case doesn't mean it's immune to that type of speculation. Good point, good point. But uh, what was interesting about uh, about this is that when the price started falling again after the, after the leap, um, uh, some people were going online saying, well, wait a second, uh, uh, was this a pump and dump? But what was interesting is, no, the insiders didn't sell off. Oh, this wasn't this wasn't uh, this wasn't an inside thing. This was a company trying to get uh, interest, and uh, and it does look quite interesting. But again, Ripple is a long term hold. This is one of those things that were that people who invested in it early are waiting until uh, uh, until a system goes live that's going to use these big institutions. Okay. But uh, well, one of the things that I'm trying to understand more about, and I'm hoping you can help plug this gap. And this is probably why you're geeking out <laughs> in the last week or two. Yes. <laughs> is uh, like the technology behind it? Like, how does it compare to Bitcoin, and Neo, and other ones? Because, because from what I'm reading, this is kind of like the you could say the controversial aspect of Ripple. From what I'm hearing, is how its network is built, like the extent of its decentralization or cent centralization, if you want to call it that. Well, I mean, it, it's funny you mention centralization or decentralization because uh, everyone's got an opinion on it, right? I mean, this is sort of the whole thing behind all of these cryptocurrencies is that, you know, Bitcoin got started because there were people that really wanted to go around central governments and to, uh, and to have sort of a free uh, currency by the people. Um, and then, of course, you have certain problems that are caused by this proof of work algorithm. Uh, and so people are trying to solve it. And then how decentralized do we want to be? How much do we tr want to trust third party entities? I'll tell you um, what I found interesting about Ripple's approach was that it just it, it's different than the other currencies that we've looked at so far. So. I believe we've talked about proof of work before. Proof of work is basically uh, the computers that are keeping track of the ledger in the, uh, the Bitcoin ledger or whatever have to do a certain amount of work in order to prove, in order to protect and secure the, the blockchain and to prevent people from double spending and to make sure that orders happen in the right, uh, 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 transactions happen in the right order. But it burns a lot of energy to do this. So then you have the proof of stake algorithm, and some, uh, which means that, well, if we're going to prevent double spending, then the people who are keeping track of the right order will probably be the ones that have the most stake. They're the older customers or the older holders of the cryptocurrency that have the most of it. And then so who, there who, was, who uses pr proof of stake? Oh, jeez, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there was... Uh, Is what, it Neo or Bitcoin? Uh, neither, neither, neither. Um, uh, I think Ethereum might be moving towards that, but they're currently proof of work. Uh, okay. There were there were a few like I, I was using Gridcoin for a while. They're using proof of stake. Okay, interesting. Um, but basically, the idea is the is that the people who have the biggest stake are the ones who are trusted to keep track of the um, uh, of the ledger. 
And then Neo, which we talked about last week, has the uh, has a different algorithm where you have certain bookkeeping computers that are trusted, and then the owners of Neo can vote on which bookkeeping computer they want to trust. So that's more centralized. Now, what I found interesting about Ripple is that it doesn't limit or authorize specifically who gets to hold a node. It's still decentralized in the sense that anyone can join it like the blockchain, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, However, instead of a proof of work, which takes a lot of time and energy, what they do is every node keeps a list of a few other nodes in the network that they trust not to collaborate. Now, this works because you're going to have the big banks on board. Uh, and uh, so uh, if I've got a node, uh, I might say, well, I know that HSBC is running a node and I know that uh, Royal Bank is running a node and I know that uh, Santander and uh, Bank of America are all running nodes. And so I could trust that those four nodes aren't collaborating. Or, uh, and so... M- Everyone in the network has to vote on which transactions should be included in each block. And as long as you're checking and verifying with nodes that you can trust aren't collaborating, it will protect the network from being overthrown by uh, uh, by a malicious third party. And it'll protect the order. So is it fair to say that where Bitcoin is like a net network infrastructure supported by people or has the potential to be supported by people uh, like miners etc ripple it would be supported by institutions i guess uh, i guess it is fair to say that but not not because that's the only people who are allowed to join like anyone can join like there's uh, there are groups but what what's important is that the structure of the algorithm means that if I join as an individual, then I would keep track of a list of people or uh, or nodes that are near me that I trust not to collaborate in order to bring down the system. And now, if nodes do start to collaborate, it just stops the ledger from going forward. And uh, because everything on the uh, on the Ripple network, every action is digitally signed, it's pretty easy to figure out who's causing the trouble if that happens. Mm, very but, interesting. Uh, this is this is what uh, what what was explained to me, and I just you know I found it absolutely fascinating, um, because what it, essentially what it does is that it makes it so that you don't have to spend a lot of energy and time doing proof of work, so it can it, it trades uh, the trade off is that it moves much faster, so and much more inexpensively. So I think that like ties into one of the main benefits um well because it's designed like that some people are less i guess supportive of ripple but the main benefit that you just highlighted is time processing time is a huge benefit so when we can when we compare say ripple to bitcoin because this is the one that's the most popular when i look at time for block uh, for for Bitcoin, I think it's uh, around about nine minutes at the moment. Or last time I checked, it was uh, around about nine minutes. Whereas when we look at Ripple, uh, it seems to be just uh, a couple of seconds. It's it's crazy fast, and this just makes it, you know, I think as a system, adds weight to the fact that it makes more sense as a solution out there in the world. Uh, another thing is, of course, is the cost. It's it's minimal. It's it's only like a fraction. Uh, well. At the moment, it's a couple of cent, but it's, it really is not a lot. So when I did this, like, remember I did this uh, Big Coffee Index to try and figure out how, like, does this cryptocurrency make sense in the real world? If we were to look at Bitcoin, if I wanted to buy a coffee at $1.50, uh, I, the average transaction cost at the moment is $4.60, which is crazy. So it doesn't really make much sense to buy coffee with, with Bitcoin. And then it takes nearly 10 minutes for the payment process to happen. So if I was to look at, okay, uh, how much does, say, uh, how much does time cost? Well, if I put it at the minimum uh, dollar rate, um, sorry, for, for labor, because that would, would, would be the time wasted by an employee at McDonald's or Starbucks waiting around for the transaction to happen, 
that would mean that the total cost to buy coffee will be $7.27. So I want to buy coffee at $1.50, but because of the, of the transaction cost and time wasted for the coffee, the whole thing will cost $7.27, which would mean that the Big Coffee Index score will be 21%. So that 21% means that that's like $1.50 divided by $7.27, which is the total cost, which is insane. Whereas if I was to look at Ripple, knowing that the time is only a few seconds, the transaction cost is only a few cents, uh, is actually less than a few cents, that would mean that its Big Coffee Index is 99.5%, which makes it more sense to use as a form of exchange in the real world. So... This is the thing about cryptocurrencies is that some of them just don't make practical sense at the moment. Like there needs to be more solutions out there to help, you know, you, uh, to help, you know, the citizens of the world use them for everyday use. So Ripple does solve a lot of these problems, but the thing is, would people get behind it because of how it's network infrastructure is maintained? So this is some something that remains to be seen because as we said, the main use case for this is more for uh, for banks to use it between themselves, but it does weigh the ar- it does weigh a lot on the argument of okay, you know what sort of network infrastructure makes sense? Is it is it worth comp- like, Is it worth giving up this decentralized aspect we see in Bitcoin in order to have a faster processing system? So mm. we will see. We'll see. The it was interesting that you mentioned that and. Uh, I forgot if I've mentioned this already, but one of the things that I was told was that uh, Ripple, the company, does have this specific use case, but there's nothing stopping other people from using XRP, like the the Ripple tokens, for whatever they want. Um, So, I mean, I could imagine someone creating a pay with Ripple uh, uh, end service, uh, sort of like... Uh, sort of like they've done for Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, to be honest with you, that's a big surprise for me because I was doing some like research to see what is out there. Like uh, we have 10x dash Bitcoin uh, wallets or you could say uh, you can get credit cards where you fill up these credit cards with those other cryptocurrencies, but you don't see many people pushing a Ripple version considering all the huge benefits that actually come with it. Uh, so we'll see. We have to watch out. Will someone create this? Will someone push this on? And maybe it's because, you know, as you said, the community is quite small. And because the well, community we also is have quite to small, remember, the Neil, users that... would be less. Sorry. I, I, we also have to remember, Neil, the, the point that we brought up on Monday, uh, which was that these c- communities do tend to be very tight-knit. Mm. That... Uh, that in any cryptocurrency community, it usually starts with uh, with a few people who are, you know, really digging into the the algorithm and the cryptography of it, and going, what can we do with it? And it, it's it almost becomes in some of these communities like an ideology, or uh, as you mentioned, almost like a religion. Maybe not so much, but uh, that it, it does become sort of like the, we've seen sort of the way and. And because the the overall community is small, I could imagine if there were a group that wanted to make a new payment service, it's more tempting for the that group to want to make their own coin rather than use one that's already in existence. Mm. I mean, especially if you think about uh, incentives right now, it, let's say you and I wanted to make a uh, a new payment service. We could fund that by doing our own ICO, and that gets us a lot of money overnight. Whereas if we did something on the Ripple platform, we might be able to make something profitable, but we wouldn't be able to do our own ICO because the XRP is already in existence. So which one is more tempting to do, right? Uh, so uh, maybe so the one that makes us a million dollars overnight. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering then, do you have any, uh, you know, when we, we, we like to do predictions, do you have any predictions on ripple like do you think do you think it can rival bitcoin or do you think it will still be in the background because of its main use case which is targeting interbank transfers do you think it can ever really you know rival bitcoin because of its practicality or do you think it'll always be in the background when you, you, when you say rival bitcoin do you mean in price or do you mean in function a good point. A good point. I would say 
in terms of being used to exchange goods like a coffee or a croissant or a bagel or whatever? Do you think people will think, migrate towards it like that? I think that the um, there are two things that need to happen for Ripple to be used by the public in that way. The first thing that has to happen is regulation on ICOs. If it become if there's a big disincentive for new companies to do an ICO because it's just too legally onerous, then you're going to see more people using existing systems to build their new companies, their new startups. And that's what it would take. Uh, I think that's going to be a big thing that would uh, uh, incentivize people to use XRP for for their new startup. And then the second thing I think that really needs to happen is they've got to launch. Like, I mean, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing this value of XRP going up and down as, on, based on speculation, mainly because we are still, a f uh, as far as I can tell, a few years away from, uh, from this interbank system going live. And as soon as they've got a, a proven uh, customer base of banks using it for interbank transactions, well, that's going to change the value of Ripple. That's going to change how visible it is. Uh, and that will probably incentivize people who want to use payment systems and work with the big banks to start uh, doing their own systems. How about you? What do you think? Wow. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed by your insight there. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ripple, you're like the oracle of uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just basically went to, the, went to Reddit and asked everyone else what they said. And, and honestly, having, having David Schwartz respond uh, in that much detail was, uh, was really interesting. Like I, I didn't even go through half of, uh, of the detail he gave. <laughs> but, but I think you just nailed something extremely important. Is it's the extent of success after launch. Until it launches, it's, it's very, very speculative. Like I think it has a very practical cryptocurrency um but you know until it's launched uh, i think that is going to be the best way of gauging it i i think it's, it's on the right path uh, because as i i guess i personally like to emphasize practicality of a cryptocurrency in the real world um and i know a lot of people look at bitcoin in a very very different way but um, I think everything really depends on the launch and how successful it is. Because if a lot of banks really jump on this, well, then you know it has a, a big has big big potential to become a de facto cryptocurrency used in many uh, in used in many current uh, countries, especially currencies, which didn't make sense. Uh, and um, so, yeah, I think it really just depends on that. So we'll see. Like um, I'm excited for Ripple. I think. It's on the right path because there's so many variations of <sighs> mechanics uh, for cryptocurrencies out there. But I think Ripple is very, very close to a, a long-term solution that we'll see take off. Hmm. I want to uh, wrap up by just thanking the uh, Ripple community at this Ripple subreddit and for David Schwartz for uh, answering a lot of my technical questions. I hope that we got them accurately yeah. <laughs> and uh, if anyone has any comments or corrections you can email us at info at analysis in chains and let us know all right before we sign off uh neil i wanted to just play a quick promo reel that i put together Ooh, for our exciting. next week uh, I'll, I'll set it up as a standalone uh thing so that everyone can get excited but i'm really ne uh, excited about this neat uh, interview we got next week so here we go this fall, Analysis in Chains is proud to bring you exclusive interviews with some of the most influential movers and shakers of the blockchain scene. Join us September 1st for our kickoff with Radoslav Albrecht. I'm Radoslav Albrecht, founder and CEO of Bitbond, and tune in to Analysis in Chains. It's going to be a blast to join us September 1st for the kickoff. Till then, keep hashing. You like my awesome music? <laughs> DJ Nathan in the house. DJ, DJ Nathan, I made it all. All right. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Tune in next week. And uh, Neil, anything else before we sign off? Uh, I would buy an album by DJ Nathan. Oh, that would be amazing. All <laughs> right, everyone. Keep hashing. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in to Analysis and Chains with Nathan and Neil. Check us out at analysisandchains.com on iTunes, Podbean, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Until next time, keep hashing.